Good morning, my friend, and namaste. Welcome to Namaste Today in the Zodiac Weather. My name is Christopher Watecki. I am the Sensei to Serious Joy, here to stand in my heart and walk in the light. Such a pleasure to light walk with you today. I'm love casting live in five dimensions, underwater on this beautiful temple of Gaia on Thursday, February 19th, 2015. And I've chosen this under the sea scene because we are now moving into Pisces. Today we're at step zero Pisces, and we are in the step of I protect, step zero. I protect is an important step as it turns out. When I first kind of started light walking, I was kind of like the fool card in the tarot. I would just kind of walk off a cliff and expect God to protect me. What I didn't realize was you actually have to ask for it. <laughs> so you have to say in a free will consciousness, hey, I want a line drawn here. I want something protected. In this case, we're protecting our most sacred part of ourself, our spiritual connection, the I sense Pisces realm. This is our ability to connect to everything that's not us. That's basically what Pisces is, everything that's not us. Being able to connect to the universe, the extraterrestrials, you name it, all right? So today we are protecting, and you're gonna see today in the cosmic clock that the planets are extremely lined up for us to go very far and fast this year in Pisces. We're gonna learn how to protect ourselves. And we're going to look at the sacred geometry of step zero. But before we do, let's first tame our brain, shall we? With the phrase of the day. I protect what I am today, and I am the light. And so it is. I protect what I am, and I am the light. Now, I add the light there in the end because I think we need affirmation. Our hearts should glow when you say that. It should feel like, ah, that's I'm special. And light is love. And light in love is God. So you can put those words in. I am the light. I am God. I am the love. Right? But I protect what I am today. And I am the light. So protecting what I am means I may take space and time before I make a decision. That's protecting my decision making. Right? I may pack my comfy pillow because I want to protect my emotions and how I feel all day. We really don't think ahead to protect. I think human beings haven't been protecting because we haven't been thinking ahead. We've been protecting in the sense of on guard if someone attacks us, but we haven't proactively been protecting our lives and defining our lives and our limits ahead of time. We haven't been pre-sending it so that it becomes the pre-sent present. So today we begin to pre-send our protection. And you'll see that we don't get an off, off opportunity to do this many times in the transit. So today, I protect what I am, and I am the light. And so it is, I thought so. So the serious step of the day is step zero Pisces. The very first step, step where we uh, cross the line from Aquarius consciousness into Pisces consciousness. And there is a moment where it just kind of pops into play. I'm already feeling Pisces myself and very much enjoying it. I would much be uh, rather be hanging out with the fishies than way high up on the mountains. It's cold up there, those Aquarius vibrations. <laughs> I'd rather be, you know, in the tropics. Now, the architecture of incarnation is it is step zero. And step zero is an interesting step because it defines... Uh, space between two sets of things and it represents all that what is not in the in the world of three dimensions so we protect first we have to always draw a circle around uh, that what we want to manifest that what we care about and zero only comes up two more times in the whole architecture of the transit it comes up again to protect everything we've done from zero to nine and then it comes up again to protect everything we've done from zero to nineteen or to 20, right? So basically, uh, they protect the realms underneath them. So I protect is important. It comes when we manifest. It's what makes a Taurus, the protection realm. And it comes into our passion because we have to kind of start to contain it at that point. So let's now look at the chakras and what's spinning up in the colors today. So we are working now in I sense. That's Pisces. That's step seven, the seventh state of awareness our connection in three-dimensional realm to all that is not material. And today with I Protect, it is two chakras that really do the protecting. The first and largest is behind the throat chakra. I think this is partly why people get hanged a lot, actually, literally cutting off uh, not just your protection, but, but your voice. So we kind of have uh, in the back of our throat what we will not do and where we close the door. And then, of course, we have in the back of our I manifest chakra and I protect too. This is the stabbing in the back kind of chakra, right? 
So energetically, we are protected in two places, and if you want to reinforce your protection, it's actually blue and orange are the colors you want to do that with. So let's take a look at the cosmic clock and see what the planets are doing. So here we are, and we're at step zero. Now the sun represents God, it represents our heart, it represents what we love. So we are moving into uh, our heart's connection to God, our heart's connection to spirit, our heart's connection to our soul. Remember, we live in three dimensions, mind, body, and spirit, or mind, body, and soul, right? Uh, and the soul energy uh, is our primary communication to everything in the universe. So when we connect to Pisces, we connect to our soul. We connect to our soul contract. We connect to why we came down in the first place. It's very easy to get distracted in the mind or in the body away from what the soul is and intends to do. A lot of times when things go wrong, they're actually going right for the soul for the first time because they've been going wrong for the mind and body all along. So we are a spiritual tricycle, and we're always uh, moving forward and trying harder, right? So today, we are moving into Pisces. We're moving into our ability to step into the step seven. And in the step zero energy, we are actually um, entering in, going into our process. Now, we have a huge booster shot, which is Neptune, of course. But before I get to the party in Pisces, I want to point out that the Earth is now moving into Virgo. And it looks like surrounded by Liliths. <laughs> by the way, uh, we, tomorrow, uh, Black Shadow will, Lilith will cross over Earth, and then Earth will cross over Black Lilith. So this means that we'll be doing a lot of um, uh, removing of fears in these first steps of Pisces. That'll be the first agenda for our spirituality, is to get rid of these shadows right here, these shadows of the past that now haunt us. And I was doing some online research uh reading about Black Moon, you know, Dark Moon Lilith, and, uh, and this alleged Dark Moon that is going around the sun or going around the earth. And the one interesting analogy that this author made was that it was like a, it was like a witch on a broomstick. Whenever Dark Moon Lilith goes past something, it's like you are almost hearing a witch, <laughs> you know, going by. So we're manifesting reality now with the earth in Virgo. That means we're going to actually manifest what it is we were trying to change six months ago when the sun was in Virgo. So you'll start to see the results of what that was about. You'll start to see these crops come up. And in the first, uh, in the first beginning of the transit, we're going to attempt to manifest fearless reality. That will be our attempt here to have complete fearless reality. And of course, we'll be talking through the whole transit of how to achieve that. It comes down to connecting to the other side, of course. Now, Mars today is also moving into step zero. It starts at 29, so the first half of the day might be aggressive, and then all of a sudden you have no energy. And when Mars goes to zero, we all of a sudden have no energy. This is a time with the sun in Pisces to kind of take communion with God. So there will be a lot of flat tires, so to speak, because we are right now trying to get in touch with our spirit. But the next 24 hours, certainly tonight, you'll find that your energy does completely kind of taper off due to the fact that Mars is going offline and on his way to his hometown of Aries. Now, looking at the metaphysics of uh, Pisces, I want to point out how the decans really unfold. In the first 10 steps, it's all about your connection to God and your basic intuition. So in the first 10 steps, all of your fears are littered. Most people have wounds in the early steps. And a lot of people have wounds in the higher steps too, but the basic first 10 steps is about clearing out your garbage and your spiritual baggage that's, you know, littering the sky. So this is all the junk that's orbiting your, your, your life that just needs to be cleaned out of your orbit and something we have to do for Earth too. I hear it's full of garbage out there. And then faith is where everything is cleared out and you begin to have faith. Faith is when you start to play along and actually put your intuition, and your spiritual in motion. So when you start to put your spirit in motion, you begin to have faith. And then you get to do some magic. Metaphysics is above that. So when you want to pull off a miracle, it's a miracle that we got that drive by the end of the deadline. It's a miracle that this happened. That's actually the high vibrations of Pisces. And from what I read and what I study, entirely possible on Earth. So um, looking at where our planets come, 
The sun is at step zero, Neptune's at step seven, Chiron's at step 16, Venus is at step 28, and Mars is at step 29. This is quite a spiritual chord that is being strummed right now. And amazingly enough, the moon is in Pisces, swinging in and tying in the orbits and the consciousness of this all together. So um, this is a powerful time, and we are being lifted up to God. Here are your stairs if you have any doubt. Now, don't worry. Venus and Mars are taking off here. They are basically plowing the fields and getting us ready in this consciousness, you know, kind of like a cat needing a mom for milk. But now that we climb up, we have this clean path, and, of course, we're going to all move up together, right? So uh, the sun is at step zero. Now, interestingly enough, um, well, let's, let's st step zero today. Actually, I do here. The moon moves from step 14 to step 19 during the day. That's basically the United States that that happens, by the way. But Neptune moved to step 7 in the last 24 hours. So, you know, yesterday we had Lycast Day in the new moon. And yesterday it was at step 6 and everything was harmonizing at step 6. And I'll be darned, as soon as we move into Pisces, Neptune goes to its home vibration, step 7. So Neptune is the step 7 crystal that tunes into step 7 in the sign of step seven at step seven that means all three dimensions are seventh heaven right and this seventh heaven vibration is going to be what the sun crosses through here in the next few days in fact i would say do not plan any calculus tests or any crazy stunts right now because you're going to be quite cloudy as the sun crosses neptune we all go a little whoo high in the sky and those who are like can go too far with addiction do so keep an eye on your friends light walkers who are edgy because this tends to push people over that edge and sometimes as spirit we're the hand that grabs them and says whoa 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 what are you doing buddy right god knows i've had people do that to me and then at the top mars is at step 29 and passes through to aries and it will feel like our masculinity just goes away once mars pops out of the sky there Venus, our giving and receiving, is manifesting uh, the final pipeline to God, basically. So this whole transit, as the sun climbs these planets, is, uh, is us climbing up the cords of spirituality. We're going to talk through it step by step. But I want to show you that, gosh golly, we got two. Now, uh, Chiron, worth mentioning, at step 16, which adds to a seven. So it's a seventh heaven party, and it's going to stay this way. And it's going to totally bring us in communion with God. So if you ever thought about maybe, you know, chanting, meditating, whatever you do now, you also get an alley up from God. So everyone gets an alley up on top of whatever they try. So I highly recommend you try and see what's going on. So let's look at the Sensei Sunrise and look at the architecture of Zero, my hero. So today I want to explain a little sacred geometry and how step zero plays into Pisces and plays into God consciousness. It goes to sacred geometry, and sacred geometry has its own stories for creation as far as how geometry unfolded. And there's a lot of mysticism and magic in geometry. In fact, I think the sacred geometry is a big part of the Masons and the Stonecutters and their mysticism and the you know a lot of the angles and things that you see in Washington, D.C., uh, our, our national capital, also sacred geometry in play. We know that some lines and things draw in currents and flow energy in certain directions. So the story goes something like this, that when Creator decided to create the 3D world, God thought in three directions into infinity, thought X into infinity, Y into infinity, and Z into infinity. And to create a separateness, uh, God drew a circle where, all they all, where they all intersected. And this was the first separation from God because now you had a relativity of consciousness instead of an absolute. The relativity and the first relativity is in versus outside versus the third, which is not or neither, right? Those are the third. So there's always three dimensions in every one of the steps. But at this point, there's one circle. And this is what step zero is. Um, our separation from creator, our separation in the 3D world from other people's creations. Now this is, I think, the uh, where the sun comes from in the sun symbol of astrology and natal horoscopes. You see this symbol to represent the sun. And to me, this is very simply 
love with a boundary around it, right? That's basically what it is. So the sun, it represents, you see a lot of this mysticism of sacred geometry in clues to a lot of the glyphs and symbols that we use in our daily life. Now what happens, according to uh, the story, is that God first separates like a cell. That's the first thing that happens. God separates like a cell, and just like everything, creates uh, two. And what you end up having are these three divisions of consciousness, uh, all having three dimensions, right? And this is the slide I got to a little quickly. So you have God, you have the goddess, and you have in the center the divine child. So this represents how consciousness overlaps consciousness and creates new consciousness. And according to the book I'm reading, Conversations with God, God talks about that every two souls that are working together creatively create this divine child between them. And he says the divine child is exactly halfway between their two bodies on earth. So if you're in New York and I'm in California and we're creating a creative project together, our divine child is somewhere in Missouri, <laughs> which might explain a lot going on in Missouri. <laughs> Just saying. But so these are the three spheres, God, divine child, and goddess. Now, it also is our classic Roman Catholic Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. All right? So the Holy Ghost is in the center there, and that's what this represents too, the three dimensions of consciousness, which is always Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, or God, Goddess, and the Divine Child. All right? Now, this area is actually called the Vesica Pisces. They call this area where the two consciousness overlap the Vesica Pisces. And interestingly enough... That is exactly where the Pisces symbol comes from. See that? Right there on top. So Pisces the fish comes from the Vesica Pisces, which comes from the sacred geometry in the house that Jack built, right? This is known as the Jesus fish. So the Jesus fish is actually the Vesica Pisces, known as the fish. And you see this symbol in all sacred geometry everywhere. This is, of course, the flower of life, which is a very sacred symbol that continues with that pattern of God dividing like cells into circles and moving around the circles, and you create these shapes. The Vesica Pisces is created over and over and over again in the sacred geometry diagram. So you see it uh, over and over, and it represents, again, how consciousness creates the collective consciousness, in my opinion. I think like my life might be one sphere, and it swings into my mom, and hers swings into someone else's. And there are Vesica Pisces between all of us, constantly creating the potential of a child, if it's a man, woman falling in love, or even the potential of um, creation, if it's two people working on a creative project. Now, you might be familiar with the Tree of Life. The Tree of Life uh, is also based on the sacred geometry. It is also surrounded by and plugs into the Flower of Life, and it is the sacred Kabbalah, or Kabbalah. I'm not quite sure what the proper is because I haven't actually studied under a rabbi, but I believe it is, um, uh, the, it's, I say Kabbalah, you say Kabbalah. <laughs> but whatever it is, it's sacred, and it ties into all of this consciousness. And the Tree of Life, from what I understand, explains how human consciousness diagrams up and down and how it flows together. So definitely one of my reading topics the next time I get a break. But I'm a Taurus, so... Will that ever happen? Well, let's hope it does. So today in your 1111, if you're watched over by the Serious Joy Personal Sensei Network, I will send you at 1111 AM, what does your Pisces energy rule in your life? So we all use Pisces to rule one part of our life. And when I say this, I'm talking about your rising sign and your soul story, not your sun sign story. And then at 3.03 p.m., I'll talk about where is your Pisces remote? Where is your remote Pisces? So we all have uh, a core home Pisces energy, and then we have what I call a remote Pisces energy, which is, in essence, uh, where we um, can access our psychic side outside of us. So where are you psychic on the inside? Where are you psychic on the outside? Those are your two fun with text of the day. If you'd like to sign up for just 30 days of the Serious Joy Sensei service that begins on March 1st, just visit SeriousJoy.me. All right, my friends, when I come back, I've got your rock and roll gospel of Pisces and the Zodiac weather after this. Live, love, be. Introducing Secrets of Birthdays. Bow, chicka, bow, wow. Are you ready to find love? Bow, chicka, chicka, bow, wow. Your secrets are coming out. Bow, bow, chicka, chicka, bow, wow. All those sexy secrets are available at secretsofbirthdays.com. Bow, chicka, bow, wow, baby. So good.
and welcome back to Namaste Today. Now let's move on to our Rock and Roll Gospel. Now the Rock and Roll Gospel is designed on We All Gotta Sing, and I'm moving into Pisces now, looking at really cool Pisces singers, and I was looking for the one that would probably have the Pisces vibe more clearly than any other singer. Can you guess who it might be? James Taylor. Boy, oh boy, this guy will just pull you into the spirit, man. Sometimes when I've been angry and I've like stumbled upon his music on my iPod, I'm just like, I don't want to hear that you're my friend, James. <laughs> like he's so sweet and so kind that you actually uh, can be triggered by him. He really is. He's a master Pisces, step 21. And actually the song I'm going to put out there today is Fire and Rain. I actually do a rock block of three videos. But fire and rain, I've seen fire and I've seen rain. I think that is our wisdom, is it not? Of what we have seen and what we haven't seen. So this is a good one to get you in the Pisces vibe if you keep playing in the uh, playlist here. But before you see fire and rain, let's take a look at the moods of each of your brothers and sisters today and see where they will be joining the Pisces and swimming along. So. Basically, wherever Pisces is, is where you're going to elevate, where you connect to God, where you get out of your stickiness in your life and you float around and get around it. And it is about getting around it. Ask any Pisces. But you will be elevating today, and each of the 12 signs are elevating this next month. Let's first start with the Scorpios. Sunny and childlike today for the Scorpios, or partly cloudy and childlike is better. You are elevating your state of love, also known as the inner child. So inner child elevation, next 30 days. Step ones, the Leos, cloudy and private today, but I think feeling a little romantic still. You are elevating your I protect, that's your inner guardian and also the keeper of intimacy and sex. That's why I think the, uh, the, uh, the hearts are staying in there. <laughs> the Cancer is cloudy and pensive today, but you are now elevating your I believe consciousness, which is the inner preacher. So one of the innovations might be to not make it a preacher. <laughs> Step three is the Sagittarius, cloudy nesting and resting today. And this month you are elevating your I feel consciousness, which is your inner nurturer. That's a good thing. Step four is the Aquarius is cloudy, productive today. But over the next 30 days, you'll be elevating your I manifest consciousness. So your inner producer that makes things happen, the Taurus in you. Gemini, sunny and professional today, but I don't think so enthused. You are actually elevating over the next month your decision making. So taking your decisions to a higher ground this is your inner leader and your career, basically, that's going to be changing. All right. Step six, the Librans. Cloudy and hyper aware today. This month, you'll be elevating your I become. That is basically your healer, your body, and everything that has to do with physical reality, as well as your daily work routines. So you'll be elevating all of those in the next 30 days. The Pisces, happy birthday to you. Cloudy but cool. You are elevating your ego, the I am, I act consciousness, or the inner warrior, if you want to put it that way. So the piranha in you, if you want to say it that way. But it is time to upgrade that. You can see the universe is giving you a lot of attention. Step eight, the Capricorns, cloudy and pensive today. You are upgrading over the month your thinking consciousness, or the inner critic. So going to upgrade the inner critic, hopefully to be not so critical. And the air eye, step nine, is cloudy and super spiritual today. Upgrading your inner sense or your soul or your spirituality, period. So you are upgrading your spirituality, and that's the way it is. Step ten, is the Tauruses, cloudy and social today, even though they're out there being social. What are you elevating? Well, your I belong consciousness, the inner politician. And because Pisces is your house of society, that means Tauruses, natural God service providers to the world. And the Virgos, finally step 11, sunny and sentimental, but still feeling a little shock face there, I think. You're going to be upgrading your relationships. It's the I give, I receive consciousness or your inner team player. Think about it that way. How is everyone's inner team player? Playing along? Now, thank you very much. If you are on YouTube, please be kind and do subscribe. We thank you ahead of time. And you can be our friend on Facebook and join our book club as well by going to soulgarden.me. And you can get on our email list and get an email when these things go live at soulmart.me. Also, if you'd like to sign up for a one-month trial of our Serious Joy uh, personal sensei service, come to seriousjoy.me. It's 19.95, and you will seriously enjoy it. 
every person that gets a text uh, has, you know, almost not everyone, but has replied and said they love it at some point. It hits them on the head. Yesterday, ladies met and had a fantastic show about GMO apples and meddling moms. I don't think it's five meddling moms. I think that's my thumb there. But uh, but it was a great show, and these great these ladies are doing great things, trying to empower women and empower uh, mothers in particular. I thank you ahead of time for coming to the Mothership of Light and telling your friends and family about us. I will see you tomorrow for your special Friday episode. Enjoy this peaceful Pisces and just let yourself float on down the lazy river, my friend. Until then, remember I love you and live, love, be. <laughs> This is just so ironic. <laughs>